Hello, good morning and welcome to today's coffee talk session. My name is Madison and I'm the marketing coordinator here at the Business Software Center. And I'm very excited to announce that we have extended our coffee talk series into fall 2020. So feel free to check us out on businesssoftwarecenter.com slash events to see the upcoming coffee talks that we have for the fall 2020 schedule. In today's coffee talk, I will be going over what IT business processes should you automate. Um, feel free to leave any comments or questions in the questions and answers section on the right hand side of your screen. I will be going over those throughout the presentation. Uh, also, feel free to find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or YouTube using the hashtag Coffee Talk TBSC. Uh, this hashtag is used primarily for communications, so if you have any insight, if you want to say how uh, this presentation went for you, feel free to share on social media and we'll be sure to um, interact with you there. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. I hope you have your cup of coffee ready for this morning's talk. So <laughs> first and foremost, manual processes are slowly killing your business. <laughs> Sounds like a very daunting sentence, but I mean, in a lot of ways it's true. And I have a quote here from Bill Gates. And so it says here, the first rule of any technology used in a business is that automation applied to an efficient operation will magnify the efficiency. The second is that automation applied to an inefficient operation will magnify the inefficiency. So Bill, Bill Gates obviously, um, is really a reputable source when it comes to anything computers, even you know with Microsoft and software automation. Um, so anything that he has to say, you know, take seriously. <laughs> uh, so we definitely do believe that focusing on automation is really valuable. However, you really need to figure out exactly which uh, areas of your business need that automate automization uh, specifically because if you start putting in effort towards something that isn't necessarily going to help your business in the long term, uh, it might overall make you inefficient. So the manual process, um, as I said before in that daunting little sentence, manual process might be killing your business. This is because manual processes often involve repetitive tasks. Um, they are linked to a decrease in customer satisfaction and also employee satisfaction. They limit your revenue growth. The manual process takes up your employees time. So this ties back to the um, employee satisfaction. And manual processes are prone to human error and inconsistency. Now I'm sure you can think about uh, your days working and having tasks every day that you have to do, and it's, it's constantly a manual thing. Uh, obviously, you wake up in the morning and check all your emails. Wouldn't it be so easy if so, <laughs> something else could filter your emails for you? Manual processes definitely make the workday seem repetitive, and it can definitely link to uh, a dis dissatisfaction with your job, but you know, like I said, also, it does limit um, return on investment. Um, it takes up time. It costs money. Um, so we, we say the solution is automating your business practices. We definitely advise automating your business practices if you have a lot of manual tasks. So what is business practice automization or BPA? It's essentially using technology to perform tasks it's replacing manual effort. It streamlines the process. Uh, it increases efficiency. It minimizes costs and it increases employee satisfaction. And so examples of this would be, um, say for instance, you're going to a restaurant, you might place orders online now before going to the restaurant rather than placing an order with a waiter or waitress. It just takes out the middleman and it ensures that there is no human error with the order that you've placed. Um, it ensures you're paying for everything that you ordered correctly, applies the discounts for you automatically. So that's just an example of one way you can automate a business. Um, and we've all 
interacted and dealt with this before. So we're pretty familiar with how uh, automating something can be beneficial to both the, the business and the consumer. But what exactly is IT business optimization? What IT business process should you automate? Uh, we here at TBSC, we work with software asset management, and we believe that an often overlooked area is software management in the IT business optimization. So here are some of the benefits of software management automization. Uh, it reduces busy work. It increases in productivity, so it gives you more time for other tasks. So two different, I'm uh, sorry, different examples of reducing the business, busy work and increasing productivity would include, for instance, uh, reharvesting. We often see this a lot with our I, IT departments is that uh, oftentimes they're so busy with uh, other IT processes that they don't have the time to review their current employees and compare them to employees who, who have previously left. And so what happens is they often are paying for Microsoft licenses to employees who are no longer with the company. So a way to reduce that busy work task is by automating it and it will increase the productivity because it automatically, um, you can automatically reharvest these subscriptions towards um, other employees and it will save you time and money and I will definitely go more into that as we discuss our product smarter SaaS. Uh, another benefit of software management is it streamlines the processes. It also improves knowledge so an example of that would be knowing your software usage. This is another thing that smarter SaaS can do easily for you like I said I'll go go over that in the future. But usage is really important to know um, because it helps you get an idea of what products or applications you're using versus what you're not using. And that really gives you the power to decide, okay, can we drop this application? Are we overspending on these certain apps? Is there a way we can migrate this app over to the cloud? Is there cheaper ways of doing this? And all of that good stuff. Another benefit of software management automation is it maintains the quality. Um, so an example of that would be audits. Auditing is certainly something that can be very daunting to many businesses. Oftentimes when Microsoft suggests there will be an audit, um, businesses start to get in a little frantic tizzy because they don't have a lot of these um, organized, sorry, they don't have a lot of these organized to the point where they know their usage and they know the software that they're paying for. So unfortunately, this might lead to um, businesses using more licenses that they've paid for and consequently they have to uh, pay auditing fees. So uh, a way of maintaining the quality would be to track and monitor your usage and know exactly what you're paying for licensing wise. Another benefit is being cost efficient. And I said this before with the reharvesting concept, but also um, cost efficiency doesn't tie into the usage because you can figure out which um, uh, software you're using versus what you're not using. You also get accurate reporting with uh, software automation and this is another important feature because uh, oftentimes with manual work um, you might get incorrect data you might add something wrong or write something down wrong or import something in your Excel sheet wrong so an example of that would be SPLA reporting SPLA stands for service provider licensing agreements and oftentimes this is a, a task that needs to be done every month and if you are doing this manually, you know that it takes a lot of time, a lot of brain power, and so you definitely need accurate reporting in order to, to do this accurately every month, and a way of um, making it easier for you would be certainly automating the task. 
And finally, the last benefit is controlling your software uh, as a service. So that would mean controlling uh, your cloud software, managing it and understanding uh, where your business is at every single month because th that's the beauty of cloud software is every month you have the option to flex your subscribers up or down. Um, you, you aren't tied to um, a certain amount of licenses. You can certainly flex up or down. So an example of that would be if you have a freelancer joining for only a few months, you can um, pay for that license for those few months and then go down. Um, it once the freelancer leaves the business. So should you automate your software management? If you are still hesitant on which software management practices you should be automated, consider asking yourself these questions. So I was able to compile a list of a few questions that you can ask yourself to see if you really are ready to automate your software management. So I'm going to go ahead and review these questions today with you. So the first question you want to ask is, are there high volume tasks? Think about it uh, with your software and with your IT departments. Are there certain high volume tasks that can definitely be reduced when, um, when dealing with software management? And I would say definitely. Um, consult with your IT team, ask them questions. Are they dealing with high volume tasks? Is there anything that can be um, reduced to improve their to improve their focus, to improve their time management. Um, oftentimes you will get there are tasks that can certainly be reduced on the manual side. And as I said before, with the reharvesting, that's definitely something that a lot of IT um, departments don't necessarily have the time for just because they have so much other stuff going on, but it's important because uh, it's a huge security risk if somebody has access to these Microsoft licenses or other licenses past their employment. Another question is how many employees does it take to perform the task? So this is another thing to consider. Is this time consuming for one employee or many employees? Um, this would be an example of the SPLAW reporting, which I've mentioned before, uh, if you have a few different people tracking your service provider licensing agreements every month, this might be something to consider automating. And luckily, TBSC, we do have a smarter SPLAW product, which can help you with that. But this is just one of many different examples of how you can uh, ask whether or not uh, it takes one or many employees to do the task. And even if it only takes one employee, I mean, you have to factor in how much time does it actually take to do because, you know, employees only have a certain schedule every week and they certainly shouldn't have to be overworking and you shouldn't have to um, do overtime for these tasks if you can automate them. So this brings me to the next question. Is this task time sensitive? I mean, time in general is important to think about. Is it time sensitive? Is it taking up too much time? Uh, you know, we are a world that works on time. Time is money. So really think about if this task can be uh, benefited if you automate the practice um, and see how it can add time to your employee schedule and see how it can really enhance your business in the long term. But especially if the task is time sensitive, like for instance, the SPLA reporting, as I've mentioned earlier, um, you know, there are deadlines to that. So if you're in a jam and maybe um, your employee who handles it uh, is sick that week and they, they can't take care of it, what are you going to do? Who else is trained on it? What happens if somebody else isn't trained? Certainly automate it because this is a time sensitive issue. Another example would be the Microsoft audit. This is another time sensitive issue. If you're served papers saying, hey, we're going to do this audit in the next few days, this really needs to get tackled. Uh, you and you don't have the employee power to get it done. Uh, automating it can certainly help you. Another question to ask is, does this task have a significant impact on other processes and systems? This is something that really needs to be considered. Um, 
say, for instance, you are taking up a lot of time looking over, um, mm, let's see, uh, Teams usage, and you're trying to figure out uh, communication strategies, and uh, you're realizing that if you just automate all of your systems to Teams, then it will make the process streamlined a lot easier uh, for you and your business. And so what I mean by that is uh, we found a lot of businesses using different forms of communication. There are some businesses who uh, jump between Teams and Zoom, jump between Teams and Skype, and that is completely inefficient when it comes to um, the business process in general. And so we found that using Teams certainly streamlines everything a lot easier for you when it comes to communication particularly because Teams allows for um, you to integrate third-party apps, uh, for you to file share. Um, so I would say that if you don't have a process or a system in place, um, it can definitely impact other processes and, um, processes and systems. And so I guess with this example I'm using with Teams, <laughs> it is, um, a significant impact to your business if you're constantly bouncing between things, sharing files in between, you know, Skype and, um, I'm sorry, sharing files, you know, through emails rather than doing it all through Teams. It just, it makes it a jumbled mess. And so just having one solid place to do everything, it just makes it so much easier. And um, another example of that would be our Smarter SaaS product. We have it so you can get a full detailed view of your usage, uh, we also have savings recommendations, automatic reharvesting, all through one dashboard. So it's all in one place for you. Um, and, and it automates a lot of the process. So I would say um, just having everything neat and organized in one area will certainly help you out. Another question to ask yourself is, are you in need of remaining software compliant? So, I would say for sure, if you are paying for software licenses, if you are using any type of software, you are definitely in need of remaining software compliant. This obviously extends to anything beyond Microsoft. You know, this is Salesforce, this is Adobe. This is a lot of things that uh, we are using today, uh, and it doesn't really matter if it is an, um, if it's a desktop or if it's in the cloud. If you are running on software, you must remain software compliant. And so automating your um, tracking, monitoring, and usage can certainly help you stay um, compliant with your software. Another question to ask yourself is, can this be done more efficiently through automation? You know, can it be done efficiently through automation? My example before with using uh, the waiter or waitress, rather than placing the order through them, you can just place it through an app and then collect it at the restaurant. Um, can this be done more efficiently with your business? Is there a way that you can cut out the middleman, save time, make it efficient, uh, make it beneficial to the consumer as well as your business? I'm, I'm sure there's certainly some software processes that can be automated and created to be more efficiently for you. So after all these questions, if you've answered yes to any of these, we would re recommend getting started on automating your software asset management for sure. So I'm going to go ahead and um, exit my presentation just really quickly to see if there are any questions coming in for me. I do have a new question. Ooh, okay, let me read this out loud here. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the questions and answers section on the side of the screen, and I'll be sure to answer them as quickly as I can. Um, so let's see here. My first question is, why is automation good for the job? Won't it make jobs disappear? You know, that really is a good question. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> it will make some jobs disappear. Um, but it will also improve business. So I, I would say as far as IT and software, 
Um, it, it won't make the job disappear. It will only enhance the job and enhance the efficiency. But, you know, as I said, with the waiter and waitress example, um, I have seen some reports saying um, there has been a reduction in jobs. And uh, I'm sure you've seen um, at the grocery store, um, the automatic cashiers now. Uh, I mean, there are certain jobs that can certainly be replaced through autom um, AI or automation. But I would say for the purposes of um, software asset management, IT, um, right now, it's only going to enhance your business. It's only going to make your IT department have more time to focus on, you know, more important tasks like <laughs> security, for instance, um, making sure everything stays secure and safe. Um, so, yeah, I would say there's nothing to overly worry about as far as automating your um, software management. Let's see if we have another question here. In a new normal with a large number of your employee working remotely, I would see that automation of software management as essential. Uh, where do we start? OK, so I would say um, a way you can start automizing your software would be to uh, know exactly what your goals are. And I would say make an assessment and figure out, OK, what exactly are the tasks that um, we should automate or consider automating? And as I said before, you know, consult with your, your departments and really figure it out. Um, you can recruit somebody to help you uh, here at TBSC. We can certainly help you with understanding um, uh, where to begin. Uh, I actually can go forward in my presentation and, and help answer this question a bit better. So let me just go ahead and move forward with my presentation. So I would say consider before automating, um, establish your goals. So our advice is to get at least 95% usage on your products and we can help you analyze your usage, see where you're currently at with your software, and then offer recommendations on how to get optimized usage. But other things you can consider are um, limiting unnecessary tasks, automating everyday reports, and integrating applications. Uh, knowledge is power, so there are um, pros and cons in uh, your current business practices. And so when you weigh out uh, what your goals are, you can really develop better business practices for your business. Uh, and I would say another thing to consider is you must think in the long term. I mean, of course, the short term does matter as well. But in the long term, if you're going to adapt uh, an automatic business practice, will it benefit you five years from now? And the answer is yes, it will. And the reason for this is because it, well, I mean, specifically with software management, it will um, cut out the middleman. It will reduce uh, employee stress. It will enhance um, employees' um, happiness at the job. I mean, these aren't facts that I'm just pulling out of my head. These are, this is information that I've found online. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of the report I was reading, uh, but I did read a report saying it does enhance employee happiness and reduces the stress. So think, certainly think of the long-term uh, effects that it could have on your business. So I would say if you uh, are needing help to start the process, certainly establish your goals, but also here at TBSC, we can definitely help you. And, and how we can help you is through our different products. Um, I did mention that we have a SPLAW reporting tool. We also have a Microsoft 365 and Teams usage tool. We have cloud migration tools. And all of these tools can help you virtually, and they all offer quick, efficient, and cost-effective uh, SaaS management. So with uh, our tools, they automate your um, business, which is really helpful uh, with SPLAW reporting. There is a lot of human error that can get in SPLAW reporting, so we just help ensure that there are minimal errors and get your reports submitted in on time. With the Smarter SaaS product we have for Microsoft 365, it tracks your usage but also offers recommendations. So before you automate, uh, you have to know what inefficiencies you will get from doing the task. 
So Smarter SAS helps you do the analysis so you know where you are now and plan where you want to get. So as I said before, um, this certainly helps get you to the goal of 95% usage. So if you're reharvesting, you can automate this and scope out the benefits. You also need accurate data for your proposed automation. So um, Smarter SAS can measure and get you that accurate, accurate data that you need um, before and after to see uh, the results for your business. And then we do help with cloud migrations. And so essentially what we do with the cloud migrations is we analyze what um, applications you're using versus what you're not using and see what can be combined and uh, help you get onto the cloud, which is automatically an amazing thing for your business because as I said before, it is a month to month subscription. You can flex your subscribers up or down. Let's see how much time I have left. I have about four minutes left and I wanted to um, go over some of our products with you. So let me see if I can go ahead and do maybe a quick demo for you in the last four minutes. Let me see if I can share my screen at all. Okay. Let me see if this is working. Yeah, okay, it's working. So I wanted to go ahead and share with you with the last few minutes that we have one of our products that I feel like could really help um, automate your business. This product is our Smarter SaaS product, and essentially it monitors uh, Microsoft 365 subscriptions. So here you can see on the dashboard um, different uh, ways uh, you re to reharvest, optimize, and surplus. Um, but I'm going to focus more on compliance just because this is something new that we've added, and I just think it's absolutely fascinating. So let me just pull up the compliance feature. So compliance definitely ties into the auditing uh, that I was talking about before, but with the, the compliance um, here, it just gives you a really nice uh, detailed view uh, and it's color coded, which makes it super easy. So with uh, compliance, especially with Microsoft products, it only allows you to have up to five devices installed per license. And as you can see, the uh, green is go. Green is go, green is OK, <laughs> which is good. So we have a lot of um, people here that are in the green, which is excellent. Yellow means, hey, hold up, slow down a bit. You have already those five installs that have been allocated for you. Just watch these just in case you might tip over. And then red is certainly not good. This is not where you want to be because this is where you're going to get clocked with those audits if you are in the red and not using your software appropriately. So you can um, you know, send an email out to this particular employee saying, hey, you have overinstalled. Um, we need to take some of the software off your devices. Um, you know, ensure that uh, over usage isn't happening. Um, I just think this is an amazing feature. Look, it's all automatic for you. It just pulls right off your Microsoft tenancy and gets this information. It's just, it's fabulous. Um, I have a few more minutes, so I'll just review another really cool automatic way of monitoring your Teams usage. Now, Teams is really growing in demand, especially with the remote working atmosphere we have right now. Um, remote work is here to stay. And so understanding your Teams usage is vitally important, especially because this is a way many businesses communicate nowadays. And it's important that businesses use, as I said before, just one form of communication rather than uh, all these different areas like Skype and Zoom and Teams all at once. It's it's really pointless. It, it's just more efficient to do it all in one way. So here we can see overall user activity and a lot of our users are using the chat messenger, whereas some of them um, aren't using the meetings or the calls. And so what you can do with this information is figure out, OK, why is it exactly they aren't using these meetings or calls. Is this because they're they're using Skype rather than Teams? Why is that? And then um, you can offer training. And what's really nice is Microsoft provides free training for you if you need it for your team to help them get on Teams. And so this is a way that can help you get definitely that 95% or more usage for your licenses. And you can use exactly what you're paying for software-wise. 
So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing that part and I'm going to go back to my presentation. We are coming to the end of um, my presentation here and I just want to thank you so much for joining. Um, I tried fitting in a lot of stuff in a very short amount of time as far as automating your business practices. So I hope you were able to learn something today. Um, <laughs> I'm really sorry it was cram packed, but if you have any questions, please email me at business soft, um, sorry, sales at businesssoftwarecenter.com. You can also use the hashtag coffee talk TBSC. This has been recorded, so you are welcome to follow us on YouTube or social media to rewatch this. Um, but feel free to also join us for our next coffee talk on 4th September. Um, this will be on SAS versus uh, IAS versus PASS on premise. What is the difference? Um, do you know the difference? It, it might seem a little confusing, but if you are in the software business or in the IT field, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So this will definitely be an introduction course uh, for those who uh, need help understanding. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for joining and I hope you were able to learn something from today's session. And as I said, if you have any other questions, please email me. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any more time today to pick up on questions. All right, thank you so much for joining me and have a great day.